Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to provide a brief introduction to angle modulation. Let us start the discussion of this topic by defining what is modulation. Modulation is a process in which some characteristics of the carrier signal are varied in accordance with the information bearing signal, which is also called as modulating signal or baseband signal, to create a modulated signal. So, we need to understand that in the modulation process, the characteristics of the carrier are varied according to the information bearing signal. The next important question to answer is, what is the need for modulation? In fact, there are a large number of reasons that support the need for modulation and in this slide I have listed four of them. The first one is increasing the signal strength. It should be noted that the information bearing signals that are transmitted are not capable of direct transmission because of their weak strength. So, it is required to increase the strength of these information bearing signals and that is where modulation comes into picture. By performing modulation, the strength of the message signal can be increased so that it can travel longer distances. Coming to the second point, wireless communication systems. Modulation techniques have removed the necessity for using wires in today's communication systems. This is because modulation is now widely used in transmitting signals from one location to another location with much faster speed. Therefore, we can say that modulation techniques have helped in enhancing the wireless communication systems. The third point says, prevention of message signals from mixing. It has been proven that modulation and its types prevent the interference of message signals from one another. If modulation is not used, it is highly likely that modulating signals interfere with one another and thereby causing errors in communication. By using modulation techniques, we can avoid the interference of message signals with one another. Therefore, modulation ensures that the signals received by the receiver are entirely perfect. The last point that is listed here is the size of the antenna. It should be noted that the signals within 20 Hz to 20 kHz frequency range can travel only a few distances. To send such message signals, the length of the antenna should be a quarter wavelength of the used frequency. Therefore, modulation is required to increase the frequency of the message signal as well as to enhance its strength to reach the receiver. Let us continue our discussion by considering a simple sinusoidal carrier that has basically three characteristics, amplitude, frequency and phase. Based upon these characteristics of the carrier wave, we obtain three basic types of modulation, which are named as amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. Let us now define these modulation types. Let us start with amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation is the process in which the amplitude of the sinusoidal carrier is slowly varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Therefore, we can state that in amplitude modulation, the carrier amplitude is varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Coming to frequency modulation, it is a process in which the frequency of the sinusoidal carrier is slowly varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Therefore, we can state that in frequency modulation, the carrier frequency is varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Lastly, coming to phase modulation, it is the process in which the phase of the sinusoidal carrier is slowly varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. That is, in phase modulation, the phase of the carrier is varied as per the information bearing signal. Now, 
Coming to the topic of this discussion, let us define what is angle modulation. Angle modulation is a process in which either the frequency or the phase of the sinusoidal carrier is varied according to the information bearing signal while keeping the amplitude constant. Let us now provide a mathematical analysis of the angle modulation. To do that, let us consider a carrier signal S of t given by AC into cos theta I of t, where AC is the carrier signal amplitude which is supposed to be held constant in angle modulation and theta I of t is the phase angle of the carrier which is supposed to be varied in accordance with the message signal m of t. Let us now consider a conventional sinusoidal signal which is also given by s of t but is defined as ac cos omega ct plus phi c where omega ct plus phi c is the angle of the conventional sinusoidal signal and phi c itself is the value of theta i of t at time t equal to 0. It should be noted that phi c is a constant because it is the phase at time t is equal to 0, whereas omega c t plus phi c represents a straight line with a slope omega c and interrupt at phi c. Let us now graphically represent the variation of the angle theta i of t as a function of time. And this is given in figure 1 here. Note that x axis represents the time and y axis represents the angle theta i of t. Coming to the graph itself, I have shown two curves. The green colored straight line shown here represents the angle of conventional sinusoidal signal and theta i of t represents the phase angle of the carrier. Let us now consider another plot where once again we are plotting theta i of t with respect to t but this plot is an hypothetical case where theta i of t is tangential to the sinusoidal signal angle omega c t plus phi c. Now, for this case, that is the case where the sinusoidal signal angle omega c t is being tangential to theta i of t, the frequency of s of t is the slope of its angle theta i of t over a very small interval of time given by delta t which is defined here. Now, if you consider this particular part of the graph where theta i of t is tangential to omega c t plus phi c, we can say that theta i of t increases linearly with respect to time and the average frequency over the interval t1 to t2 which is defined here along the x axis or from t to t plus delta t can be given by the expression f delta t of t is given by theta i of t plus delta t minus theta i of t divided by 2 pi into delta t. Please note the numerator of this equation represents the difference between these two values that is theta i of t plus delta t and theta i of t which is simply delta y and in the denominator we have taken the difference between these two values that is t and t plus delta t therefore this is delta x. Therefore we can say that f delta t of t represents the slope of the tangential curve. I have given the same expression here please note f delta t of t equals difference in y axis values which is theta i of t plus delta t minus theta i of t divided by difference in x axis values which is 2 pi delta t. With this expression I can now find an expression for the instantaneous frequency of the angle modulated wave s of t which is defined by f i of t and this is equal to limit delta t tends to 0 f delta t of t. 
Now let me substitute equation 3 into this particular part here. Therefore, limit delta t tends to 0. This complete term represents the RHS of equation 3. Since 2 pi is a constant, I am going to take it outside the limits. So, it will be 1 by 2 pi into limits delta t tends to 0 theta i of t plus delta t minus theta i of t divided by delta t. Let us now apply the limits that is delta t tends to 0. Therefore, the numerator reduces to theta i of t and the denominator is simply dt. This is the expression for instantaneous frequency of the angle modulated wave. Please note, this is a very important relation that relates the instantaneous frequency of the angle modulated wave with the phase angle of the carrier which is theta i of t. From this equation, we find that the instantaneous frequency of the angle modulated wave which is f i of t is a function of the angle of the carrier signal which is theta i of t. Therefore, coming back to equation 1 which represents a sinusoidal carrier, we note that the angle modulated signal s of t can be assumed as if it is a rotating phasor of length ac and angle theta i of t. Now, since this is a phasor, we must consider the angular velocity of such a phasor. And the angular velocity of the phasor is said to be d by dt of theta i of t and this is measured in radians per second as per equation 4. Let us now come back and consider the unmodulated sinusoidal carrier once again with an angle theta i of t which is equal to 2 pi f c t plus phi c. We have already denoted it in one of our previous slides. Now, if I extend the principle of phasor to the unmodulated carrier, I can now say that a unmodulated carrier signal can also be considered as a phasor with a constant angular velocity equal to 2 pi f c t. Right. Now that we have established the value of theta i of t which is the angle of the unmodulated carrier, if I want to perform angle modulation, we can therefore see that there are an infinite number of ways in which the angle theta i of t can be varied in some manner or the other with respect to the baseband signal. However, we shall consider only two commonly used techniques which are phase modulation and frequency modulation. In my next video, I will find time domain expressions for both phase modulation as well as frequency modulation. So, stay tuned. Before we end this discussion, let me show you the waveforms for the different types of modulated signals. For example, the waveform A that is shown here represents the carrier. Waveform B represents the input signal which is the information bearing signal. If I perform amplitude modulation of the carrier using the information bearing signal, I will obtain the diagram in figure C. So, figure C represents amplitude modulated wave. Please note, in the amplitude modulated wave, the amplitude of the carrier is varied in accordance with the information bearing signal M of T. Coming to the next waveform here, this waveform is for phase modulated wave. In phase modulation, the phase of the carrier is varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Lastly, coming to the last waveform here, this waveform represents frequency modulated wave where the frequency of the carrier is varied in accordance with the information bearing signal. Well, that is a brief introduction to angle modulation. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.